Hi, I'm Horan Rogenas. I'm a platform engineer at the platform regime. Uh, are you enjoying the conference so far? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So the talk today is about management, managing stateful Docker containers using platform. Uh, how much people here have heard about, uh, about Docker? Cool. That's what they call the Docker cooler. <laughs> Docker, 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 right? Don't get me wrong with that slide. I love Docker. The GoFundMe team loves Docker. Uh, so, you know, we have been using containers for a long time. Uh, GoFundMe is using Gordon. So, we're using uh, containers. Uh, a lot of people are using containers in Staccato, guys. The, the kids stay guys are using, you know, his LXC as a container for ruining their, their DAs, the GoFundMe DAs. The Google guys has been using uh, your containers for a long time. But, you know, Docker provides something that no other container technology provides and it's the social aspect about creating image. So being able to create a, you know, a, a Docker image using a Docker file or creating your, your Docker image, publishing that image in the Docker registry and then be able to share that image, image with the rest of the developers, this is something that is really, really, really great. Okay. So now, you know, I'm going to tell you a history. I'm going to start yeah, explaining an history. You know, it's about Bosch. You know, everybody is familiar with Cloud Foundry Bosch here? Yeah? Okay, cool. Woo! Ah, my bad. This is my end. Okay, by the way, uh, you know, the Stark and Wang, uh, the Stark and Wang uh, guys today, they have released a new tool. It's called Try CF. So you need to try it because, you know, it's, it's a nice way to bootstrap a CF environment on AWS in a really easy way. So you need to try it, right? Okay? So I'm going to tell a history about, you know, it's a, it's a little clamshell that was, uh, you know, sitting in the ocean. And, you know, it was looking. And in the meantime, you know, there was a whale that was, you know, swimming across the ocean. And, you know, that the clamshell looked at that, uh, that, uh, that whale and said, oh, I like that. <laughs> so I, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the history, you know, but you know, it's, they, they, met, they met in a charge, you know, they, they wait six months and then the clamshell told the whale, hey, do you want to go with me, etc. You know, after several days, they get married, you know, etc. And, you know, after that, so after several days, so they, they, they get a, a baby. And the baby is what we call the Docker Boss release, okay? This is something that... <laughs> This is something that if you are following the, the Pivotal blog, uh, we have been released, uh, I think, uh, last week. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a way to orchestrate Docker containers using an existing technology that is Cloud Foundry Launch. So what's, what's beautiful about that Docker Bosch release? So this is the list of features that we, that we support in Docker Bosch release. So the first thing is when you start playing with Docker, you start, you know, just running a container on a physical host, on a virtual machine, or whatever. Then you start, you know, needing more images. You need to read more containers. And then you have a bunch of containers and you need to orchestrate all of the containers. Because there are some containers that depend on other, conten uh, on other containers, because you need to deploy multiple virtual machines and deploy the Docker containers on that virtual machines, etc. So with the Docker version list, you will be able to uh, orchestrate several Docker containers on several uh, virtual machines. The best thing also about uh, you know, our Bosch is that right now it supports multiple infrastructures and services. So we support vSphere, if you want to deploy on vSphere, we support AWS, we support OpenStack, we support CloudStack, thanks to the NTT guys that they contribute back with that CPI, and we support also Google Computation. So, uh, you know, using the same tool, you will be able to deploy your Docker containers. If you want to deploy to Google today, and if you, tomorrow you decide to go back to another infrastructure service like iOS, so using the same tool, you will be able to deploy the Docker containers. Another thing that is it's really amazing, if you, you have been uh, today in the lighting uh, tabs this morning, Cornelia has talked about the four levels of high availability of Cloud Foundry. So, they, they explain that there are the two below uh, high reality method, methods are on, on Bosch. So this is something that we can also leverage on our Docker version list. What does it mean? It will mean that Bosch is going to monitor 
your Docker containers for you. If for some reason one of the Docker containers goes down because the process exits, because there is a uh, whatever, Docker is going to restart that container for you without doing anything, without trying you know, to put any kind of monitor system inside your Docker container. It's going to be outside of your Docker container. Also, uh, you will be able to uh, define dependencies between containers. Sometimes you rely, you have, a, I don't know, a whatever application that you rely on a database. If for some reason the database goes down and the version list is going to risk you, <coughs> perhaps if you are, your application is not well designed, yet, you won't be able to come back to the database. So you need to restart this database. Uh, you need to restart the application, sorry. So with the Docker version list, you will be able to define uh, dependencies between that Docker containers. So if your application depends on the database and the database goes down, Bosch is going to restart the database and then it's going to restart your application. So. But you know, sometimes, especially if you are running your, your virtual machines or some bullet infrastructure, so something can be wrong. For example, a user accidentally can kill one of the virtual machines. Or for example, if you are running on AWS, AWS can decide that that virtual machine is in a host that should be in the maintenance mode and is going to kill your VM. So in that cases, Bosch is, able, is, able, is, is going also to resurrect your VM. But does not mean it's going to spin a new VM? It's going to inject it and VM all of your Docker containers? It's going to start all of the Docker containers and if you have some kind of persistent disk attached to your virtual machine, it's going to reattach the old persistent disk to a new virtual machine. With the Docker version release, you will also be able to bind physical host volumes to your Docker containers. What does it mean? Does it mean that if, for example, you are deploying a Docker container that is a MySQL database, you can bind your Docker volume to the virtual machine persistent disk. Why is useful? Because if for some reason your virtual machine goes down and Bosch is going to resurrect and create another virtual machine, it's going to reattach the old persistent disk. So you are not going to lose any data. You are going to preserve, Bosch is going to preserve uh, the data for you. Also, with Bosch, you, you will be able to recite your, data, your persistent disk without uh, losing any data. I will show you that there is now a, there is like a demo, so I will show you all that features. And the latest uh, you know, feature that I, I, add, I added, uh, I think it was yesterday, is that with the, the Docker version release, you will be able to get all of the logs or all of your containers and to aggregate all of that logs on a remote syslog. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so now it's time for uh, demo time. I, I plan to do a, a real demo time. I have some videos as a backup, but let's try if the Wi-Fi uh, wi works, I will do some real demo. Okay, I will try to deploy some, uh, some uh, real containers. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's an alert. This is an experimental watch release. So if you want to play with that, uh, I'm fine with that, but don't use that Docker watch release for a production system. Or if you want to run a production system, it should be a French production system, but not your production system, okay? <laughs> okay, so what, what are we going to do? So the first thing is that, uh, you know, we are going to, to, to use a deployment, a voice deployment manifest, that, you know, in that deployment manifest, it will be, you know, that, uh, the common things that we put in a deployment manifest. We will see, we will put the resources, so the type of instance that we want to deploy, the number of people machines that we want to deploy, we will set the networking, so we will see which is the networking for that, or for each virtual machines, if we are going to use, you know, a, some kind of private network with our standard connectivity, or if we are going to assign a static IP, a floating IP, elastic IP to one of our virtual machines, etc. And then we are going to say for each of the jobs, each of the virtual machines, what are the containers that we are going to put inside the virtual machines. The way that we are going to do is using what we call the job properties. On dungeon properties, as you can see, we are going to tell which is the name of the Docker container, which is the image that we want to deploy. Right now, it only supports the, you know, the public Docker registry. If for running that container, we need to set any command. If we want to expose any of the internal container ports 
to our virtual machine, to a start virtual machine, if we want to bind any volume, because for example, if we want to deploy a database, so we want to map a directory inside the container with the persistent disk that is attached to our virtual machine, and it allows you uh, also to, to specify a virtual variables. But you know, sometimes uh, it makes sense to use one of the public Docker image, but sometimes it makes sense to create your virtual machine, uh, your, I'm sorry, your Docker image. So, uh, another option is to specify a Docker file inside your deployment manifest. This is an example, this is an example that we are going to run later. We are going to build a Docker image using Elasticsearch, and we are going to, watch, it's going to create that image for us when it's going to deploy, and then it's going to run the container for us. So, for this example, I'm going to use the Google Compute Engine. So I'm going to log in into one of uh, uh, Jumbox virtual machine where I have deployed everything. So if I type Bosch as status, you will see that I have a micro Bosch that is deployed on Google Computing Chain. Uh, right now I have, if I type Bosch releases, I will see that I have the Docker Bosch release overloaded to my uh, micro Bosch. And then what we're going to do is just edit the deployment manifest <coughs> it has everything, it has the director ID, it has the name of the deployment. I'm going to assign a static IP address, <coughs> it's a public IP address to my virtual machine, so I can show you how running my Docker containers in a in Google Compute Engine virtual machine, I can access from outside, from my laptop, I will access to the virtual machine. And then what then we're going to do is we're going to deploy three different jobs, uh, three different containers. So the first thing that they're going to deploy is a Redis container. The second one will be a MySQL container. And the third one will be a Elasticsearch. The first, for the first two things, I'm going to use a, a, you know, a build a Docker image. For the third one, I'm going to build an image on the fly. Okay, so watch the blade. And now, Bosch, the first thing uh, that is going to happen is Bosch is going to create a virtual machine. So I'm going to the Google develop, the Developer Console. And in a few moments, we will see that there is a new virtual machine that uh, uh, is being created. Okay? We see that there is here. Okay? There is no second here. Okay, in the meantime, while well, this is, uh, is being deployed, uh, I will go to the GitHub repo where the Docker Bosch release is. Because here there are all instructions on how to run that Docker Bosch release. Uh, one, of the things, uh, one of the things that, uh, that I highlighted in the, the readme are all the properties that are supported in that Docker Bosch release. Uh, right now, the Docker Bosch release. Uh, it's going to install Docker version 1.00 that it was, it has been released, uh, I think, that two days ago, or yesterday, I don't remember how it went. And here you can see all of the options that we can set for our container. So we can set the name of the container, the image, the Docker file, if we want to build a Docker uh, image on the fly, the command and entry point, if we want to store so, some ports, if we want to attach any volume to our persistent disk, if we want to set dependencies between, between containers, uh, we can set using that uh, property. If we want to set some kind of environment variables to our Docker containers, if we want to uh, restrict the number of uh, CPU or memory that we want to assign to our Docker container, we can also set uh, that on the deployment ma manifest. So let's go back to the, to the Bosch task. So we have seen uh, it has created a new VM, and now it's updating the job. What does it mean? It means is that it's going to install on the virtual machines. It's going to start the Docker daemon. It's going to start the Docker daemon. Then it's going to fetch all of the images that we have set on our deployment manifest. 
if we have a Docker file, it's going to build that image from the Docker file, and then it's going to start all of the containers. So let me show you. I'm going to query which is that VM that it has been deployed. So it's like one. I'm going to ECCH inside the neutral machine so we can see what's going on. Well, the deployment has finished yet. So if now, we will see that we have, you know, we have the Docker daemon that this is started. And we have every of the different Docker containers that are, start, and are still starting. Right now, they are in the process of fetching the image from the public uh, registry. Any questions so far? Yeah, same. So this basically started on the local container in that machine, but how they get all from different ports on the server that's on the page. Uh-huh. How do they get all from that machine? The machine is to expose the ports to the you know to the physical host and to the public IP address. You need to set let me go back here. This is an example. When we use the bind post, this is the way that we expose internal posts that are inside the container to the physical host. So in that case, we are using your deploying arrays. So we are going to expose the same port, it's 6379 that is running inside the container. We're going to expose that port to the 6379 on the physical host. It, it can be different if you want, but you know it's just for the, that example it's exactly the same. You have a question? What happens on depends on? What happens on? Depends on. So what about the benzo? So let's back here and we'll show you the example. So what happens? Uh, what is going to happen is if just going to use an example. If I have a MySQL service and I have an application, if I said that the application depends on the MySQL service, the application, the Docker container for the application is not going to be started until the MySQL service is going to be started. Second, if for some reason the MySQL container goes down, the application is going to be down also. And it's going to be it's not going to be restarted until the MySQL service is going to be restarted again. Okay? So you don't do anything with links? No, we are not using links. No. You know, the problem with links is that if you use links, it's useful only when you start containers. Yeah. But if for some reason, you know, the master goes down, you know, nothing prevents that this container is going to be restarted. You know, because the, links, the way that the links uh, work is just using environments variables inside. So the way that Bosch works is, for some reason, the master goes down, it's going to shoot down also the application, and then it's going to start the master and then the application. Okay. If you're Bosch deployment, are you deploying the <coughs> multiple VMs, or are they all on the same VM? In this example, on the same VM, but they can go on several VMs if they want. Right. When it's on multiple VMs, what happens with the one that dies and its data belongs to one VM image? Well, you want to set it up, but suddenly on a different VM, the original VM is out of capacity or something else. You can't feel it because other containers are running on it. Right. What do you do? You know, I like that question because it's insulted right now. And I asked the community to continue back with this kind of stuff. You know, uh, when we wrote the blog post, we asked it for that. So right now, you know, if we want to try to find a method, to set dependencies between containers that are on different virtual machines. That that will be useful. You can get. But right now it's unsolved. Any other question? I 
I, I will say that it's quite different, you know, it's a, you know, nothing can get a CF push. You know, it's, right now if you are going to use the Docker for you know, it's, it's more to spin up services than not applications. Because if not, you need to build a container and you need to create, you know, whatever you need to run that application inside that container. With a CF push, this doesn't happen. The CF push, if you push the application and your application is up and running, and it will set up for you all the dependencies in terms of, you know, if, if it's a Ruby application, it will go on Ruby, Rails, or the gems, etc. If you are going to, you know, it, it's, a, it's a Java application, it will go on for you Tomcat or the Java or whatever. Any other questions? Okay. To the Python users, how do you trust them? Like, please wonder why you chose to implement this as sort of a nesting of Bosch kind of as opposed to just a Docker CDI. Because I see that heads up thing being really cool at the Bosch level, not just at the Docker Bosch level. Right. So why not a CDI instead of this nested? You know, because just to be fair, this is an experimental CDI. This is a fair approach to do. So it's a, it's a nice feature to, you know, to implement that kind of dependencies outside of the, you know, the content. Of is there, I agree with that. Is there an advantage in doing this as opposed to trying to do a doctor's CPI? No, no, okay. there is not a advantage. Okay. You know, we did that because it was really easy without modifying, without forking Bosch. Right. No? If, if we need to do that, then we need to fork Bosch. And we didn't want to do that. Right? Any other questions? No, so I'm going to show you uh, one of the features of killing a one of the raised containers and see that it, it really restores the container. So I'm going to kill that PID. And we have seen that now Redis is listening on a different port. So it has been restarted automatically uh, by Bosch. Just, just to, to make sure that we can access to that, you know, to that uh, container, I'm going to use the, you know, the public IP address. So I'm going to type Redis click post. So in this example, we can we can show you that we can access from my laptop to one of that containers that it's running inside of one of the virtual machines. Uh, any questions? No? Okay. So, the next example is, yes, I'm going to kill a VM. So if I go back here, to see what VM So it's VM 37, I go back here, I can give you an idea. Oh, before that, before that I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to set James Ross. Okay? And now I'm going to kill again. So what is happening, what is going to happen right now, is that Bosch is going to detect that the VM is down. Using the resurrector uh, that is built inside Bosch is going to create another VM for us. As that VM has a persistent disk attached, it's going to reattach that persistent disk to the new VM. And Moni is going to restart the containers again and it's going to attach the same bottle to our Docker container. So we are not going to lose uh, anything. So if I go back here, In a few seconds, I will see that there should be a task. It's kind of fixed. So what happens? Bosch has detected that there is a missing VM. is now creating a new VM, and it's going to deploy all of the jobs inside the VM again for us. I came here again, I will see that there is a new VM, 
and Bosch is deploying everything inside the VM again. So I'm going to search into the new VM to see what happens. Now questions? No, there is no time. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> 